those who were involved in making it come to life. Join us as we go. Behind the door. Good evening and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Door with the Grey Rooms podcast. I am your host, Brooks Bigley, and visiting the rooms for a second time this season is the author of Season 3, Episode 16, Dave Lasoda, who lost his soul in the bread aisle. How are you this evening, Dave? I'm doing well, Brooks. Thank you. That's excellent. You, uh, you put the fear in me that I don't want to go to my local grocery store anymore. As if we needed any more anxiety to go shopping, right? Right, huh? Exactly. We don't, we're already being told to stay home, and then we're like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll venture out, right? Like, things are calming down a little bit. Wear your mask, you know, go to the grocery store. And then you got grandmas yelling at people and, you know, <laughs> condemning people to hell. I mean, uh, you're such a fantastic writer. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. This, this one was, was, was fun to write. It was fun to listen to. I mean, Jason did a great oh job. I mean, at the at the sound effects, um, and two, this was just like pure speculative fiction. I feel like uh, you uh, you did a great job of transitioning from that. Like, um, you know, your last story with us had a lot of um, kind of like history behind it. You know, this is just bam, normal life, boom, some shit happens, everything goes awry. How did you How did you come up with this one? Oh, uh, this one. Um, I mean, we we all know uh, some folks that maybe while we're out in public that um, would would approach you like uh, at the gas station or um, in the the market and um, have have some some interesting things to talk about. Um, <laughs> I, I remember, uh, and, and this was uh, actually staged, but whenever I was in school, there was a preacher that would. Uh, uh, sing, you know, hellfire and brimstone to to all the the college kids coming out of a building. Um, every day at three p.m., you can find him outside of a building. So, um, but this one, uh, this was actually, um, I guess, loosely based on real events. Um, if we go with just knowing things or knowing people or running into uh, people that have uh, some interesting things to say while we're doing our most mundane. Uh, things, and I just took that and then I went with it, um, and then say you know we have those those people that are um, the the end is nigh and the the brimstone is near and um, you know kiss your loved ones because you're gonna die and then so what happens if that actually ha- you know right it's like the classic person with the the a frame board that they wear the you know ringing mm-hmm. their bell as they're standing on the corner yeah except your character oh my god she was so aggressive just right off the bat super aggressive and it's 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 you know the that change i think there's that change in personality um that really gets to uh the the listener or or, or the reader for that matter um because she was you know like you said, really aggressive, and then oh, nothing, everything's fine. I'm just right. trying to save the soul, <laughs> right? Right, like no, nothing, nothing happened here. It, mm-hmm. it, to me, I also um, kind of harken back to that movie. Uh, oh gosh, I think it was called was it Legion? Uh, yeah, they're in the the diner, and it's just this nice little old lady, and then she's like, "You're gonna die," or something <laughs> like that. I paraphrasing here, but, right? Um, and I, I think that some of the more terrifying things is is the innocuous, right? The things that that are seemingly um, benign or, or should be safe. Right. Right. Little old lady standing in the bread aisle. Right. And then, you know, it, it's, it's people standing in the house. I, I walk past all, well, I used to walk past people all the time and, and, you know, say, excuse me or, or, you know, whatever, but it's, it's kind of shakes things up whenever there's a, that just little bit off at first. And then it turns out to right, be right. a lot of bit off. Now, I have a burning question for you here. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the story, you know, our, our narrator, uh, his friend Derek calls, and he's at a different supermarket. <laughs> what is that about? You've got more than one possessed, although she did talk about her kingdom at the end. So, like, maybe, maybe there, yeah, I, you don't have to explain if you don't want to, but no. clearly there's more than one supermarket being affected here. Yeah, and and that was um, the tie-in with the 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 um, I guess the inspiration to the story, where there were multiple sightings of this uh, person that that uh, was just trying to save people's souls. 
um, in about a 30 mile radius in about, I think two days. <laughs> so it was, it was, you know, I thought that you could incorporate, I could incorporate that, um, same sort of, uh, uh, feeling and, and, and have it, you know, what is going on, what is happening on this day, particularly that is, is, is calling this, uh, this fourth and then this kingdom to, to, uh, show up. Interesting. I like how there were, there weren't any, hmm. I was going to say there weren't any religious tones, but it, it's like a religious undertone basically to it, which kind of does kind of add more of that, that, that scariness. Cause we all, you know, battle deep inside being afraid of the devil. Where are we going to go when we die? These are all just questions that humans, you know, infinitely have been asking forever. Yes. Uh, so anytime there's a story that involves, questions. there you go. Yeah. Anytime there's a story that involves even the slightest hint at possession or just something otherworldly like that versus it being a monster or I guess a ghost. But yeah, those things always get to me. So I really did. I really did find the story creepier. Now, had she just been like, I don't know. She just turned into a zombie or vampire or something like, you know, like a vampire loose in the, in the grocery store. I'd be like, yeah. Or just start flailing around with a knife. Right. That would have been right, a, little right, less, right. a little less creepy than, okay, your soul is mine. Yeah. A, t- a typical Thursday in the city, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I really appreciate it. But then you also had kind of, again, that religious undertone almost in your prior story with us. Um, um, do you, do you typically ever include elements like that in your stories or this was just kind of coincidental for the last two? Uh, not consciously. I, I don't, I don't think that there's a, a conscious effort to, um, really put in a religious undertone, whether it be for, uh, just plot drivers or, or whatever. Um, I think these were just coincidental. I wanted, um, I think in, in the, the, all for me, it was more of a feeling of ignorance in the past, right? They, they didn't understand things, so and they needed something to blame. Um, back then, they hid behind their religion and and decided that it was because of that that we were going to you know persecute. This one was just. Okay, devil, sure. I think I said it in chat one time. It's like, you know, just show up and kill shit. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> there you go. Action packed. Right, yeah, I, I love the, because um, there's kind of uh, a morality, um, a message basically, and all for me. And this one is just, yet again, another just feel good horror story, basically. You don't have to think too much about it. It's not about piecing together things or remembering, you know, things per se. It's just a very linear adventure that we go through very quickly through the narrative narrator's um, eyes basically so now when you were piecing together the story like i get the sense do you have snow like is this aside from the horror element is this something that you personally are familiar with like having to go out to a store and acquire all your food because you're about to be trapped in your home for a few days not as much as as some folks like in the the new england area minnesota the dakotas and things like that i live in uh, southwest pennsylvania so we get our fair share Okay. But not um, usually the we're going to be snowed in for days. I remember a few years back, probably I think it was 2010, we got two feet overnight um, sometime in February. But other than that, we really haven't had much of the, the way of <clears throat> storms that heavy. Um, not much. Like you look at, I guess, Denver and Colorado just got dumped on here the past few days. Um, nothing that bad usually, but so, yeah, I have, uh, have some experience getting out there and, and four wheeling and, and <laughs> getting to a store if need be. Okay. Yeah. I'm in the middle of California. So we're in this like very thin belt that goes around, kind of curls around like the lower portion of, you know, the, 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 all of the States. Like we just, there's never snow here. It's barely ever below, you know, 50 something during the day. It's usually above 60. So I'm seeing like 80% of, of North America being pounded by snow and every other conceivable type of just cold weather. And we're just, you know, sitting here with slight sun. Maybe it's just overcast a little bit, a couple drops of rain. So I, I guess I'm fortunate. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. I mean, I like the seasons, but then again, I, I do like uh, that that sort of, <clears throat> I guess, band of weather where it's like not much colder than 50, but not much hotter than, you know, 80. So 
that's kind of my, my wheelhouse as far as weather goes. Well, we do have our intense summers here and, and specifically in the area I live in now, uh, I don't know if this is due to, to global warming or anything, but for sure, we are now hitting yearly wildfires all over where I live, where this used to be like once every 10 years. And now, I mean, we, we, went, we just went through three years in a row uh, of just yeah. intense fires. We've lost whole towns uh, mm-hmm. to this, just these massive wire fi- fi- wildfires that just can't be put out. So that's kind of like our, that's our snow, I guess, however, <laughs> sounds bizarre to say. But <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I, yeah, I mean, snow goes away eventually, I guess. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> right. I, I'm, that's 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 tough i couldn't imagine having that like and i'm i guess the the definition of temperate we don't get um like tornadoes uh we'll get rain from hurricanes and that's about it um we don't have to worry about earthquakes it's kind of like in that zone where we have a little bit of everything but nothing to be um like i said overtly uh, aware of or afraid of Right, like no big disasters happening. Right, I mean, we don't need earthquake insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get those here too. Oh my god, I lived through the uh, the nineteen eighty nine. I'd call it the San Francisco earthquake, but it was called the Loma Prieta earthquake. So, yep, we're just waiting. I'm just waiting for the next thing to happen, and then uh, I won't be here anymore. Someone else will take over the show. <laughs> well, you know, let's well let's live it up until that happens, right? Let's Thank let's you. make every day count. Perfect. Absolutely. I love that perspective. Uh, so, so what I was, um, going back to your story, I was, I was, and we, we actually kind of joked about this in the beginning here. Um, I got the sense of like, maybe the pandemic spurred you on to write this story because of the idea of, um, him, you know, being stuck in home, you know, like the isolation of knowing the snow is coming, being at home, but then like, oh, you know, how kind of like here and there, you know, we're seeing, you know, COVID going down, people are slightly opening up, you know, certain states, things are opening up here and there. So there you go. Now here, uh, your character's, oh, he's going, he's going to go out. He's going to go venture out to go shopping at the grocery store. Um, in terms of the actual pandemic, like how, how have you been like coping with everything? How has like life changed for you in this last year? Like, what do you do differently? Oh boy. Um, actually it's, it's, I guess, coincidental that today was uh, a year ago today. Uh, was the last time I saw my office mates, um, in the same place. So <clears throat> it's been, it hasn't been easy. It's the same four walls doing the same thing routine. Granted, I, I'm, uh, thankful that I can continue to work and do what I do um, of course, of course. and and make it, I hope to make a difference um, to the students that I work with. Um, I'm able to still continue to teach. I'm able to continue um, to do my critique workshops. Uh, so the, in that sense, I, I'm blessed and I'm blessed not having an hour plus uh one way commute every day. Um, so it was saving and saving money, but, uh, you know, I, I, we're, we're social creatures. Uh, we, we are just social animals. We were built that way. And so some interaction is, is necessary. And I'd be lying to say if it was all, uh, rainbows and butterflies during this time, <laughs> um, the mud keeps me sane. That's for sure. Um, but things that I, I've really tried to, um, I've heard it called a, a creative winter and um, over the span of probably like November and December into January, I really had a, a bit of a, a dry spell where I didn't write. I wasn't reading. And uh, this is, I read over a hundred books last year. So it had been, um, you know, kind of difficult in the sense. Um, but uh, having a good group of people either uh, around me via text and and uh, other chat rooms and things like that really really helped because in the we, we were all going through it and i know it's cliche to say oh uh, we're you're not alone right everyone uh, it's it's we're alone together and stuff. Kind of, yeah. yes it's buzzword you're never alone we're in it together and stuff like that but yeah. it really made you think about um who was there and what was uh, was what was around being just like I, I went out I've I've gone out and and seen folks and but just not nearly as much as as you know I could have I got to see my niece's first birthday I get to see my nephew and things like that so it's nice but um, the creative side really took a hit 
And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I try to get, I try to get goals to submit something every month. I worked it. Uh, it was funny. I, I hit two goals in January, uh, zero in February, but then like made up for February in, in March so far. So, <laughs> so I have some things submitted. I have some things, um, just wrote an article um, for our site um, about shared psychosis. So I got some things out there. Yeah. 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 It, it, this, nobody, I feel like I'm speaking for the whole planet here, but <laughs> nobody's life is the same anymore. We have all, we, it's, it's true. It's, we have all gone through this together, but separately, of course, but it's every single thing has changed. Like our, our circle of friends have been reevaluated. You know, our daily activities have, have morphed into either something familiar, but different, or just something altogether different. Um, priorities have shifted. Like, I don't know. I, I, I would never say this was like, I'm glad this happened, but in hindsight, I think maybe it spurred on more change in more people than at any point in a hundred years. I don't know, since world war two, I just, this has been such a global issue and it's changed oh, yeah. so many things profoundly. Um, I mean, even for me, like I go out into nature now more often than I ever did before. I, I love soaking up the sun and going on hikes now. And I honestly didn't do that as much. I was more concerned about what movie theater I was going to go to, <laughs> which bar I was going to go hang out at, you know, and I don't give a shit about any of that stuff anymore. And it's great. It feels great, actually. Yeah, it definitely put things into perspective. I mean, even if, if you're one of those folks that say, well, I didn't change anything for this year. I continue to do anything. Your life has changed. Um, you just, uh, you don't see it yet. And it's very often do we see changes, um, or very rarely, I should say that we see changes when they're happening. It's often in, in, in reflection where we take a look back and see how things, how pieces have moved, um, that we really get it. But, um, and, and so many subconscious things too, like, like affecting your writing, you know, this, this creative mm -hmm. winter, like some people might not even be connecting. They might think like, oh, well, I kept my job and, mm -hmm. you know, I still have the same home and I'm doing okay. But maybe subconsciously they also don't find joy in certain things anymore. And that just comes from just this baseline anxiety that kind of is running through everybody as we're all kind of like holding hands and waiting for the next thing, <laughs> the next calamity to happen, I guess. And I think that is, and I think that that this has brought out a lot of um, opportunities for that, that in, uh, inner uh, reflection, right? And then finding out what really is important um, and sharing time with, with each other. Uh, it's it's um, been interesting. And I tell my students all the time, because some of them, I mean, this is affecting the, the you know, 22, 25 year olds too. Um, I have to tell them that something good has to come out of this on the other side, some innovation, something, um, something on the other end of this, it has to be good. And I have, have held on to that, um, for most of it, like just, uh, being able to connect with, uh, other writers via our, our discord, right. Um, there wouldn't have been probably a chance if I was doing things normally, either driving every day for two hours and, and not getting, uh, a chance to connect with these people or getting an opportunity to, to write certain things um, or explore different uh, genres, even um, teaching. So there, there's things that I'm afforded now that may not have been available. Had I, you know, maybe people weren't taking writing classes in the, during, during a time where it was uh, better weather. Right. Um, but now that we're, they were home um and also, I had students that were outside of my my area that were able to attend classes. So I had, you know, from different states, from different cities, that they were able to to sign on and and hopefully learn something about writing. Yeah, see that there you go. Those are those priorities shifting, and and you know, I'm hoping that more often than not, people are finding that their priority shifting is a good thing. I guess, like mm -hmm. I didn't really need that anymore, but this is now bringing me happiness. You know, or not necessarily happiness, but bringing me um, completion in something versus, you know, um, the prior life that we were all living. Then again, I don't want to, I don't want to 
poo poo on anyone who might literally feel like maybe maybe things haven't changed for them. I mean, that can also be a good thing for that person if that is how they feel. If they've been able to maintain uh, their life, if they were happy with their life prior to all of this, and they still enjoy their life. I mean, that's that is also a great thing. That doesn't mean like, oh, you coward, you have no feelings. <laughs> no, absolutely. God bless right. them. I'm, I'm glad right. that, exactly. that, that you, you made it through. Right. The rest of us will meet you there soon, hopefully. First, yeah, first rounds on me whenever I get to meet you. <laughs> exactly. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't want to I almost I realized, oh man, I hope I'm not vibrating lower here. I'm not trying to no, sound negative no, here. I was no, trying to no. Get into the positive spin of things yeah. here. Yeah, and that and that's it. You know, we're 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 on. Hopefully, again, buzzword, cliche, whatever you want to call it. We're turning the corner of this thing, and and at least I hope we are. And um, I think that that more opportunities um, for everyone are, are, are going to be available um, for things that they really, really want to do. Uh, you know, it, it's it's one of those things like, hey. The trip you haven't taken, maybe now's the chance, right? That that person that you haven't uh, spoken with in a while, maybe reach out. Um, right. It's it's like I said, I, there there's got to be something good on the other end of this, or else, uh, yeah, I, I'm just leaving it at that. There's got to be. <laughs> you believe it? It is so. I, I do. I, 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 I am man. I am manifesting it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm manifesting it right there with you, man. We both pushing that energy out for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So then, what are some things then that you do do? You know, outside of horror, outside of writing, what are some things that you do right now that do keep you sane and keep you happy? Oh boy, um, read a lot. I got my my reading mojo back, so to speak. Um, so I've been diving in. Uh, one of the things, one of the projects that I'm working on right now is a horror fantasy hybrid. Um, so I've been getting into the more uh, fantasy books that I had grown up with because that was my first love whenever growing up. I, I was in the horror. I read the Stephen Kings. I watched, uh, you know, uh, Poltergeist and 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 uh, The Exorcist and House. That's a that's a might be a deep cut. I don't know if, if not not the Japanese House. Hausu or whatever, however you want to say it, but uh, oh, I'm not familiar with that. How, yeah, it, it is. Um, it's an interesting movie. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Uh, guy gets or inherits, uh, I think, his aunt's or his, his grandmother's house, um, and he's a writer, I believe. And um, just strange things start happening in the house, and and um, Bull Shannon from Night Court's on it. And it does. So, oh wow! Yeah, it, I remember uh, it, him. Look it up. It, it's house. It's in mid mid. I think mid nineties, maybe late eighties. It it was one of my favorites as a kid growing up. I, I haven't watched it lately, so if it doesn't hold up, I apologize, uh, roomies. <laughs> Wait, Bull, Bull was the he had the shaved head on Night Court, right? Yeah, he was like he the, was the, one of the, the he was one of the characters. Richard Mull, I think, is his name. Oh, I totally have to look that up. That's that's yeah. like a blast from the past. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I watched all those things, the the Nightmare on Elm Street, the the Friday the Thirteenth. But uh, I just remember, I guess, one time I was taking a trip to uh, I had family in New England in Rhode Island, and I walked into a, a, a game shop and I got my my first uh, like I guess tabletop gaming set and I don't know what it was. It was just that fantasy that they called to me. So I, I read. I remember eight years old or something. And my aunt got me the, the fellowship trilogy. So I, I, that was my first passion. So I'm getting a little bit into that more just to see how, uh, the, the quest, the hero quest, um, tale is told in different, uh, by different writers, I guess I should say, and, and trying to grasp onto that for this next project, this next novel. That's awesome. So you're doing a lot of reading. Do you listen to anything, any new podcasts, anything like that that you would recommend? New podcasts? I mean, I'll cross promote all day. I that's uh, kind of was my um, thing during my commutes. Um, even whenever I work straight in the city, um, sometimes it would take me two hours to go ten miles, depending on Pittsburgh traffic. <laughs> I, I say I say that, and and I'm not sure. You know how traffic is where you uh, are, Brooks. But I know California traffic is ridiculous sometimes in some places. Oh yeah, San Francisco Bay Area, where I live, there was one point there was construction on the freeway, and I had to drive about seven and a half miles only mm -hmm. down the freeway to get to work, and that would take about an hour and a half. So yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't listening to podcasts back then because this was like maybe 2007, 2008. I don't think I knew what a podcast was, no. but I certainly listened to a lot of music in the car. <laughs> no, and and I'm all across the board as far as what I listen to. Um, narr story narration, um, 
Nelson Powell's and uh, Daniel Foytek from I think they're both from around my area. Um, they do oh, like, Wicked uh, Library, the Wicked yeah Wicked Library and mm-hmm. uh, Victoria's Lift. Um, big fan of theirs. Um, the stuff that TJ Lee's doing, like with the the table reads and the um, writer's mythos. Uh, just listening to interviews uh, up with with these folks uh, has been very. Um, informative and educational and then i listen to craft a podcast like uh San- brandon sanderson has um and mary robin at Kowal and dan wells and howard taylor they all have um it's called writing excuses i think that's a really good one as far as like craft goes true crime uh live D podcasts I'm, I'm all over the board so ah um, but that's great so you're listening to lots of podcasts so you're keeping the podcast alive that's great oh <laughs> sometimes single-handedly <laughs> with with how many i follow and 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 burn through because it, it, it's some of the one of those things where i can multitask right if i'm i'm doing stuff around the house if i'm walking i can listen to things and and consume some sort of media where i can't you know necessarily have to sit in front of a tv to to watch uh, and binge watch a uh, uh tv show i can you know binge watch a or binge, binge listen to a show while doing everything around my house so um, right. yeah i will always sing the praises of podcasts it's the perfect passive activity that you can do in tandem with you know b- about everything else i mean some people of course I mean, there are certain times where, like, if it's a really heavy audio drama, it might be a little bit more difficult to follow along. But, of course, you got you got every conceivable type of genre within podcasting. So there's always something that will fit the activity that you're currently doing. Oh, um, absolutely. I mean, from, from this one to TED Talks to any sort of craft, uh, uh, writing craft podcast, like the, the, the guys from um, Nightville have, have a craft podcast now with uh start with this right so it's 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 um really good and and if it's literally whatever your interest is you can find it you can find either something that's that specific if you're into audio dramas if you're just into narration like i know the stuff that uh, john girls has been doing is is he's from from just doing this um uh, narration whenever he first started to the the production that he's doing now are you talking about it, creepy podcast yeah, creepy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I listen to that too. I, John, John is a an amazing. John is different. John is more to me like David Cummings because John Grills and David Cummings are kind of. I don't. I don't want to say. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to kiss butt here. I guess so. I don't want to say icons, but they are for sure leaders. I think, uh, like in the horror podcasting uh, genre, uh, they're just both fantastic humans outside of the podcast. Just the way that they hold themselves and they talk to their fans is it's very um, inspiring. They're just really, really good people in general. You know, they're not just showing up to record a story and then that's it. Oh, right. And then and we, we talked about that before, especially with your interview uh, last week. Everyone on that that no sleep side sounds like they're 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 good people. And just the amount of work that both David and John had put in at the very outset of, of starting that. And that's not to take any way. I mean, Jason has, has done a phenomenal job. And then oh, sure. the, the, I mean, the, what he has produced here. And I mean, I'm not trying to kiss butt for my season four uh, story, <clears throat> um, but <laughs> yes. wink, wink. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it's just one of those things like this one, the, the, the audio quality of this one, I don't know what it was, if it was, you know, Graham and Aaron and Ewan or Ewan um, in their acting, which was phenomenal, but oh, God, also Aaron. Oh man, she was so scary, <laughs> but so convincing too. Un- unreal. Um mm-hmm. But uh, like it started, I started hearing like that, that binaural quality that like Darkest Night really, really honed in on, and and yes, me, yes, you yes, know yes. what I mean. So that's the yeah. first time that and maybe it's the like I had better earphones on whenever or headphones on that I was I was listening to it. But this one really packed a punch as far as the audio quality. So again, season four story is coming soon. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jason really, um, he's always tried to, to give that kind of binaural, um, feeling. Uh, I think that he really hunkers down into certain, uh, scenarios in, in stories. And he just, he just sits there just plugging away at different, uh, panning and levels and everything to really convince you, 
you know, not just throw, oh, let me take a bar scene and just slap that behind in the background as a sound. No, he'll, he'll really get into like, let me put some voices here. Let me put some clinking sounds here, like to really space it out. So your eyes are closed and you just are lost thinking you're in that bar scene. Uh, And I, you know, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to poo poo again here, but I don't know if a lot of other podcasts per se do that. Maybe it's more of just, oh, bar scene. Let me just throw some people talking in the background. Yeah. Jason doesn't do that. Jason really goes into the detail. Yeah. No, that's right. It's attention to detail and that really shines through. It it really does. Well, I think that, uh, he's totally going to produce your season four episode now. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Jason. I'm not trying to talk to you. Yeah. If not, I mean, I have to, I have to get, I have one ready. I think I have to, uh, quit out thinking myself and, you know, um, out, uh, over editing. That's a you know problem. I, I do that. And I, I will run anybody. it through. Yeah, I know. And I'll run it through my critique groups and they'll look at me as like, yep, yeah, looks good. That one, that one, that one, uh, semicolon that you turned into a comma looks great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for submitting again. Can we get something new? Um, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're all, creative types in general we're always hypercritical of ourselves um always our own worst critic and uh there's an exercise that i i do with my my class normally at the very beginning um that we we and i got this from um oh grant faulkner over at the nanorimo and uh right-minded podcast he has um i guess this is for like their junior writers but they have them draw or write out who their inner critic is or whoever their inner editor is um and then describe it whether it's you know a big monster chasing you with dictionaries and thesauruses and and things like that (laughs) or uh you know sometimes it's your you know seventh grade english teacher that said you know this is because you wrote a story about ghosts and goblins or or you know orcs and dragons that it wasn't good so whoever that is we we just write that out and then at the end of that exercise we tear them up and burn them and say that you know this this isn't allowed in this room and during our writing sessions now you know after we're done with the sessions and after we're done with writing, then we can let that editor back in because it has some merit, but during the first steps, it's not allowed in. And uh, I have to remember that myself because I'll sit there and stare at a blank page waiting for that perfect first sentence for days. Interesting mental exercise. (laughs) Wow. Oh, there's, and it's on the tip of my tongue and I have this perfect quote that I was just going to say based on what you just said, but of course I can't access it because, you know, brain fog, damn it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Just really laughs> staring at the perfect page for the, the, the perfect sentence. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a quote and it's, oh, uh, my friend has this quote on her laptop screen and she's a writer and it's, it's a perfect quote and I can't, <laughs> God damn, think of it right now. <laughs> you have the method, everything is there except the words. I just know, I believe me, I know. Ah, yeah. It's like how you can't read words in an actual dream, but like you kind of infer what it is. Damn it. I just can't remember. So anyways. No, no but I mean, it, it does help me sometimes. I, I, I did it the other day. I have a story idea um, and I have the document open. I have it saved and I'm ready to go. And it's still on my desktop. Not a word written, right? So it's it's something that you really have to battle with it. And I know that the creative types do in general. So um, if that helps anyone, great. Um, because it is. It, it helps me sometimes just to, to banish that, that person or that thing just for the first draft. That's a great, that's absolutely great mental exercise. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope so. I hope. That does help anyone listening right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's perfect. Well, uh, do you uh, have, since we've talked last, do you have anything new that you uh looking forward to releasing or anything, you know, new that you've been working on that you're proud to talk about or same old, same old? No, I dropped, I, I, I did submit a uh, short f- for a uh, publication and then I'm finishing up editing a flash fiction piece for the same um so we'll see how that goes. I'm I'm also one of those ones that uh, submit and then constantly refresh emails, waiting for answers. Um, <laughs> you and it, everyone else. <laughs> yep. So uh, I mean, I'm just like you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of us. One of us. Um, and uh, yeah. So then I got two, uh, at least I think two ready or 
uh, working for season four. Um, and then I have a few, um, like I said, in the, in the works as far as um, getting those one submission a month out. Um, working in progress. One, one's um, about sleep paralysis, I think. I think that's where I'm going to go with it. I'm not sure yet. Um, and then editing first novel still. I want to get on to that because I think um, in June there might be some sort of mentorship program that I, I'm eligible for and um, just writing the new stuff in the novel. So really trying to organize time between all that and then still, you know, reading books for their website to review doing, um, I write the, sometimes I'll throw uh, some nonfiction, like true, true life, real life horror, um, articles up there. I do some, uh, book versus movie comparisons on the site. Um, so yeah, you can find all that stuff at horrorbound.net. Um, we have some really talented folks over there writing fiction too. So that's, that's interesting to, to see, um, folks that, that some of them haven't written anything that have really come into their own as far as, uh, and I'm trying to encourage them to, to start sending you guys stuff too. So might have yeah, a, lot sweet, of please. Yeah, a little hub of, of new authors. That's, that's great. That's awesome. But, um, other than, yeah, other than that, we, we've just, uh, chugging along, um, reading and writing occasionally and you know that's with the dog that's it surviving you only got three days right you got yesterday today and tomorrow that's all that matters mm -hmm. and then the, the thing is too and I've, I've said this the only times that you can't do anything at all is tomorrow and yesterday so we have to yep. do what's right today right i'm full of cliches and and, and wise attitudes. and i love all of them because i'm just like you man i have a whole stash of cliches i got i got tropes i got it what, what you want man what you want i got them all <laughs> what day is that um, <laughs> so, oh man so no we're, we're good but yeah like you said just just one foot in front of the other literally and, and getting by and uh thumbs good on the other end of it that's for sure well, thanks for joining us tonight and explaining why it's a better idea to have your groceries delivered to your house instead. <laughs> Inst Instacart is amazing. No, can, can, can I do that? Can I, can I plug Instacart on this? Uh, <laughs> you already did. You already I guess did. so. Too, too late. So, yeah. Too late. <laughs> uh, Brooke, uh, uh, Brooks, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. It's always great talking to you. Oh, yeah. I appreciate you taking the time to sit with us, man. You know, thank you for sharing your world with us here. Um, and as usual, the biggest thank you goes out to our fans and followers who listen daily and spread the good word of Bob. Shopping can be very therapeutic until someone's grandma starts yelling at you. Then it's time to run. Hashtag stay gray. Take care and enjoy your evening, Dave. Good night, Brooks. Thank you. And good night, folks. Bye. Join us each week after every episode for another edition of Behind 